This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN, who are a virtual private network provider, allowing you to be safe and secure online. I absolutely love Surfshark, and there's a number of reasons I want to share with you. First of all, I find it so easy to use, and I have it installed on multiple devices such as my iPad, my iPhone, and my laptop, and you can install it on so many other platforms, even like your PlayStation, your Xbox, or your smart TV, to really help keep you safe and secure. I also love that because it keeps me safe and secure, and as you guys know, I've been victim to theft. One was attempted identity theft and two um, people on separate occasions um, stole my bank details from transactions I made online. So I think it's really important to use a VPN and it helps keep you safer because you've also got uncrackable encryption with Surfshark and they maintain a strict no locks policy. I also love that at the moment I am in Greece and I'm so lucky to be here but using a VPN allows you to access different movies or television programs from other countries. So I'm using Netflix UK via my VPN by connecting to UK to continue watching Below Deck and also on the ITV hub to continue watching my secret pleasure which is Love Island. I also love that they have a 30 day free return policy, which means that if you don't love it, you can get your money back and try it risk-free. But I'm confident you guys are going to love it as much as I do. So today, Surfshark have given you an exclusive discount code. If you enter my code SCOTTISH, you will get 83% off plus an extra three months for free. So it's a really amazing deal, and if you haven't tried Surfshark yet, I highly recommend that you go and check it out. And let me know in the comments if you're loving using Surfshark. Okay, so I heard that you were really struggling to sleep. And I'm here to help you. And I wanted to start today by making you a special tea to help you feel better. I'm going to make you hot honey and lemon tea just. It will make you feel better. It will also of lemon. 
we're just going to pop them is my nails. <laughs> Limos. Okay. And then we need to add some honey. Okay. Here's the honey. Just clear honey. We're going to We're just going to get some of the honey flavor in the tea. We're just going to let this brew as I do just now. And let it diffuse. Okay. Pop that down. And I'll pop this back as well, our lemon. I love the smell of fresh lemon. It's just so nice. Comforting, but I'm sure you'll enjoy this. It will make you feel better. Okay, it will. I'm also going to light the candle and I'll pop it a little bit further away because it can be quite loud. We have this wonderful. And it crackles and burns. And this one is a trilogy one, so it's holiday cheer. It smells a bit like winter. Oh, it's beautiful. It's one of my favorite scents. So we're going to light this, and I'll pop this out of view. Okay. You can hear this. See the crackles. I love the sound of it. And it's just going to distribute a really warm and comforting aroma around the room to help you sleep and add a nice background sound. So I'm going to pop this over here. Mama. 
swirl in lavender in with warm water and I'm going to gently soak your face just to comfort you struggle with sleep it can affect joy the next day and sometimes make it anxious or frustrated when we can fall asleep so it's a vicious cycle but not to worry I'm here to help you Somewhere snowy in a large cabin, looking at the window with the fire crackling behind you on a warm sofa, staring at the blizzard rolling down the mountain, the forests covered 
and snow. Maybe that's where you'll find your peace. I know that when it comes into autumn for me, I love everything cozy. This time of year, even though it's summer for most, here in Scotland, we start to see a drop in temperature and lots of rain. And recently I felt that autumn is coming and that maybe we're getting ready for autumn. Maybe we'll start to see oranges and red and yellows appear on the trees. I think I'm ready for it. For some cozy nights. Long nights. As long as they're cozy and relaxing. It's easier to sleep as well in the winter because it's less hot and it's darker, so you're not waking up from the light. Whereas I find in the summer, the light streaming in and the heat can be difficult for you to sleep in and me. So perhaps it will be a welcomed, a welcomed. of year. I was trying to think of a word to say there. There. You're just licking wonderful. Okay. Let us finish with this for now. Well, this side of the year, when you come into winter, there's much to, there's much to look forward to in normal times. You have, it's exciting, I find, seeing the nature's change. You have quite a few like holiday times. Um, you have Halloween. Here in the UK, you have Bonfire Night. In the US, you have Thanksgiving. And then we have Black Friday for shopping. And then you have the run up in December to Christmas. And I feel like this time of year is so much to look forward to in that time of winter. I just find it's the other side of winter that can be difficult. I find that January and February can be very long months. It's not my favourite time of year at all, to be honest. But I think, I don't know about you, but trying to think of ways to cope with it better, to be 
able to enjoy those months, to have things to look forward to. Maybe you are the same, and maybe you have things to try and look forward to. Let me know. filled a cart 
and two oxen could hardly draw it, and the gardener knew not what in the world to do with it, nor whether it would be a blessing or a curse to him. One day he said to himself, What shall I do with it? If I sell it, it will bring no more than another, and for eating, the little turnips are better than this. The best thing, perhaps, is to carry it and give it to the king as a mark of respect. Then he yonked, yoked his oxen and drew the turnip to the court and gave it to the king. What a wonderful thing, said the king. I have seen many strange things, but such a monster as this I never saw. Where did you get the seed? Or is it only your luck? If so, you are a true child of fortune. Ah, no, answered the gardener. I am no child of fortune. I am a poor soldier who could never get enough to live upon. So I laid aside my red coat and set to work, tiling the ground. I have a brother who is rich, and your majesty knows him well, and all the world knows him, but because I am poor, everybody forgets me. The king then took pity on him and said, You shall be poor no longer. I will give you so much that you shall be even richer than your brother. Then he gave him gold and land and flocks and made him so rich that his brother's fortune could not at all be compared with his. When the brother heard of all this and how a turnip had made the gardener so rich, he envied him sorely and bethought himself how he could contrive to get the same good fortune for himself. However, he determined to manage more cleverly than his brother, and got together a rich present of gold and fine horses for the king, and thought he must have a much larger gift in his return, for if his brother had received so much for only a turnip, what must his present be worth? The king took the gift very graciously, and said he knew not what to give in return more valuable and wonderful than the great turnip, so the soldier was forced to put it into a cart and drag it home with him. When he reached home, he knew not upon whom to vent his rage and spite, and at length wicked thoughts came to his head, and he resolved to kill his brother. So he hired some villains to murder him, and having shown them where to lie in ambush, he went to his brother and said, Dear brother, I have found a hidden treasure. Let us go and dig it up and share it between us. The other had no suspicions of his roguery, and so they went out together, and as they were tra travelling along, the murderers rushed out upon him, bound him, and were going to ham hang him on a tree. But whilst they were all getting ready, they heard the trampling of a horse at a distance, which so frightened them that they pushed their prisoner neck and shoulders together into a sack and swung him up by a cord to the tree, where they left him dangling and ran away. Meantime, he worked and worked away till he made a large enough hole to put out his head. When the horseman came up, he proved to be a student, a merry fellow who was journeying along on his nag and singing as he went. As soon as the man in the sack saw him passing under the tree, he cried out, Good morning, good morning to thee, my friend. The student looked about everywhere, and seeing no one, and not knowing where the voice came from, he cried out, Who calls me? The, then the man in the tree answered, 
Lift up your eyes, for behold, here I sit in the sack of wisdom. Here have I, in a short time, learned great and wondrous things. Compared to this seat, all the learning of the schools is as empty air. A little longer, and I shall know all that a man know, and shall come forth wiser than the wisest of mankind. Here I discern the signs and motions of the heavens and the stars, the laws that control the winds, the number of the sands on the seashore, the healing of the sick, the virtues of all symbols of birds and of precious stones. Were you but here once, my friend, you would feel and own the power of knowledge. The student listened to all of this and wondered much. At last he said, Blessed be the day and hour when I find you. Cannot you contrive to let me into the sack for a little while? Then the other answered as if very unwillingly, A little space I may allow you to sit here, if you will reward me well and entreat me kindly. But you must tarry yet an hour below, till I have learned some little matters that are yet unknown to me. So the student sat himself down and waited a while, but the time hung heavy upon him, and he begged earnestly what he might ascend forth forthwith, for his thirst for knowledge was great. Then the other pretended to give way and said, you must let the sack of wisdom descend by untying yonder cord, and then you shalt enter. So the student let him down, opened the sack, and set him free. Now then, cried he, let me ascend quickly. As he began to put himself into the sack, heels first. Wait a while, said the gardener. That is not the way. Then he pushed him in head first, tied up the sack, and swung up the searcher after wisdom dangling in the air. How is it with you, friend? said he. Do you not feel that wisdom comes unto you? Rest in peace till you are a wiser man than you were. So saying, he trotted off on the student's neck, and left the poor fellow to gather wisdom till somebody should come and let him down. The end. And that was the bedtime story for you to fall asleep to. So, I'm going to love you and leave you and creep out very slowly from your room. Dream of wonder.